Howdy folks, this is Tony here, and let's watch the implosion of Joe Biden's campaign at the NATO press conference. I will be providing periodic commentary on sort of the last few minutes of this, so let's go. Has made weapons inside Russia, and if I may, your convention is coming up where your delegates are pledged to make you the official nominee. If they have second thoughts, are they free to vote their conscience? Obviously, they're free to do whatever they want, but... Oh, he just released his delegates. I can already hear the pro Kamala Harris, anti Biden, yes, queens, just shouting from the rooftops. He just said on national television, international television, that his delegates can do whatever they want. That is going to make this convention quite spicy, probably. Let's keep going. I get overwhelming support. Overwhelming support. I won, how, I forget how many votes I won in the primary. They're overwhelming. And so tomorrow, if all of a sudden I show up at the convention, everybody says, we want somebody else, that's the democratic process. Again, he just doubled down on his delegates being free to choose whomever they want. I don't know how else to interpret this, but it almost seems like it's a, some kind of Freudian slip because maybe deep down he's tired of pretending to be a president. Let's continue. It's not gonna happen. Even if that means they vote for someone else? Sure, look. I'll end this with this. I served in the Senate a long time. I understand the impetus. Okay, did you notice how he blinked a lot before he said impetus? That's clearly a sign of discomfort and some form of just remorse. I don't know if it's remorse or if he's just feeling uncomfortable with the question of his candidacy, but he's clearly deep down nervous about whether or not he's actually going to be the nominee. Of candidates running for local office and whether they think the top of they can help them or not. In my state of Delaware, which was a very uh, at least a purple, it was a red state when I started, in terms of we now talk red and blue. Um, I, uh, I don't recall most of the Democratic presidents winning my state when I was a candidate. The truth of the matter is I understand the self-interest of a candidate. If they think that, you know, running with Biden at the top is going to hurt them, then they're going to run away. I get it. But so far, go and look at the polling data in their states. Look at... That polling data has New York as competitive right now. That polling data has Minnesota and Virginia as tilt red right now. So if he's going to use the polling data as the authority in his argument, he's got a huge issue. But let's continue. The in-depth... And by the way... I think you'd all acknowledge, and you're all experts, I'm not being solicitous about the president, you're, you're experts on this stuff. How accurate does anybody think the polls are these days? So he had an interview with George Stephanopoulos, where he essentially said the polls are showing him ahead because he wanted to defeat Stephanopoulos' argument of him possibly being behind. And now those same polls, he supposedly used to trust, he now no longer trusts. He wants to have it both ways. Whenever a poll comes out that is skewed in his favor, he says it's a trustworthy poll. But whenever a poll comes out that shows him not ahead, he says it's an untrustworthy poll. Big time confirmation bias coming from this guy. I can give you a series of polls where you have likely voters, me versus Trump, where I win all the time. When the, un the unlikely voters vote, he wins sometimes. The bottom line is all the polling data right now, which I think is premature because the campaign really hasn't even started. I mean, it hadn't started in earnest yet. Most of the time it doesn't start till after September, after Labor Day. So a lot can happen, but I think- A lot has already happened. Let's see, the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, the fentanyl pouring over the border, what, two Chinese spy balloons, as well as the economy pretty much tanking, and your disastrous performance at the first debate, and all the vacations that you've taken. You're right, a lot can happen, but also 
A lot has already happened, and I think it's fair to say that most of the American people have already seen enough to make their decision. I'm the best qual. I know, I believe I'm the best qualified to govern. Notice he went from I know to I believe. Does he sound like a man that is sure of himself? Let's continue. And I think I'm the best qualified to win. But there are other people who could be Trump too. But it's awful start, to start from scratch. And, you know, we talk about, you know, money raised. We're not doing bad. We got about $220 million in the bank. We're doing well. So with that, do you have any want to follow up on any of that? You just ask me. Yes. Oh, boy, he's playing mind sweep. Normally, having scripted interactions for 97% of his presidency, he just went off script and allowed a follow-up question, guys. Let's see how well he handles this. <laughs> um, <laughs> you earlier explained confidence in your vice president. Yes. If your team came back and showed you data that she would fare better against former President Donald Trump. By the way, that's an argument I actually believe the last video I posted was on that very topic because again her status as a quote unquote minority woman is going to bridge that intersectionality gap that democrats love to harp on in swing states so yeah kamala harris is more of a threat to trump than biden is i don't care that she cackles and that she's a poor communicator a lot of especially boomer black people are obsessed with race and are kind of brainwashed sadly and they would be glad to come out in droves and push her over the hump. So let's continue with the question. Would you reconsider your decision to stay in the race? No, unless they came back and said, there's no way you can win. Okay, so he just said that even if Kamala could do better, he still wants to be the one to do it. All right, all of you Yas Queen Democrats who claim that the Democratic Party is about the advancement of people of color, can you defend how a white man just said he needs to be number one even if he's not as good at the job as a black woman or a supposedly black woman? See, your little racial logic just falls apart. Biden's an old racist white man. He doesn't give a damn about you guys. He just uses you. Let's continue. Me. No one's saying that. Oh, enough with this creepy whisper, dude. He's like a freaking jigsaw. No bull says that. I could easily imagine Biden whispering, Hi, would you like to play a game? The key is in the chest next to you. You have 30 seconds, or I cut off both of your legs. Okay. This, this ends tonight's press conference. All right, so after this shouting match, we're going to watch the ultimate coup de gras Biden gives himself, the ultimate campaign implosion. Thanks, everybody. Respectfully, earlier you misspoke in your opening answer. You referred to Vice President Harris as Vice President Trump. Right now, Donald Trump is using that to mock your age and your memory. How do you combat that criticism from tonight? Listen to him. President listen to him? Okay, sure. I'm going to listen to Trump and go vote for him. All right, I guess that's enough for me now. <laughs> 